Alright, well. I got a new thing that I do now. And we're starting it today. Huh? So when someone is different, society treats them like they're animals. Society treats them like they're crazy, like they're sick, like they're twisted or disturbed, which is how they got the name. And welcome to the jukebox. Today we're reviewing Disturbed, 10,000 Fists. And right off, like we always do it, give our ratings. Well, first off, I want to say that I thought you were about to treat me like an animal because I'm a different <laughs> one of the group here. I got real nervous. That's He's like, oh, here it goes. <laughs> that might get roasted. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> this is bullshit. That's this music. Um, for overall review, uh, it's mm -hmm. a five out of ten for me. Five, okay. Um, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a three. Mm, I figured that. Yeah, because she's not a rock fan. Ah, that's not true. Or just, 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 just not this type of rock. It, it, it was just this album. Just, 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 just this particular album. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I do like this group. So mine was like a seven, but there's reasons why it's higher, and some reasons why it could have been better, in my opinion. But first things first, um, I remember this is one of the few albums I've listened to, rock albums, straight through. Like, and even from when I was younger, this is one of the only ones I had heard, like, straight through before. And a couple of these I don't remember, so it was like, I was like, oh, I like this song, or I, or I don't like this song. But when I was younger, I remember, like, um, particularly, like, I, I mentioned before, it made me feel like I was in, a, like, a WWE wrestling, like, type of thing. And I remember we we would listen to like rock albums or just have like certain songs we like from from rock music, and we would get the CD and put it in our Xbox 360. And when you create a wrestler in SmackDown vs Raw, you can give them their songs. So a couple of these are like I remember from that. So that, that's why some were like take me back in random moments in life like that. But I know um, just favorites, least favorites. Might as well get straight to that. Um, I don't think that I could give you a least favorite. So there's a couple of these like. Ah. I just think that mostly it all sounds the same. Yeah. Unfortunately, I feel like it's... Um, I'm going to steal this from Kamari. But it was an aggressive Janae Aiko album. Because mm -hmm. it all flowed so well. That, that so actually angry. is very fair. Um, <laughs> it was, very fair. I was listening but to it let like... Let me pull up this day. song list to make sure. Because what I, I'm going to do... I'm gonna, for today's episode, since we all kind of feel that way, there's a couple songs like where it's like they just kind of go. I'm, gonna, I'm only going to talk about key songs, in my opinion. I'm not gonna talk about ones I physically like. I remember this song very vividly. I know the one song that I really, really, um, I actually enjoyed was "Defy." I think that's what it's DFI? called. DFI. 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 That's and that's my favorite. Mine's stricken. I I, en I enjoyed the hell out of that song. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one because that, that was gonna be like when I first listened to this album. It, I don't remember that song at all. And when I went back and listened to it, I was like, "This is really fucking good." And I, I was like, "Good." Hmm. And, and and that's kind of just where it was for me. Yeah. I like that one. I just didn't think it was the best. I like that. I like how it had like a whole message. It had like a. It was it was just an overall good song to me, and for one of the things, this is also a hot take to me. But this isn't even about this album. But "Land of Confusion" is a cover of "Land of Confusion" by Genesis, and I think this version is better than the original because the original is it's it's old rock. It's like eighties, nineties, but this one is very like it has like the drums and it has more passionate feel to me. The other one kind of is kind of just like a rock, like an old rock song that's just going. This one has like more like energy, and and I, and I fuck with that about that version. Had your shoulders down. It it did it, 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 it like first of all, I heard it, I was like, okay, because I, I remember the original. Like my dad would play the original, then I heard this, and I'm like, nah, I like this version better. It makes me want to kick stuff over. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know who Genesis is or what the original song is. So, um, you know Phil Collins. He made um in the air tonight. I didn't know Phil Collins. Yeah, he, he, also, he made the most fire soundtrack in Disney history for Tarzan. And okay. He, he came from Genesis, so. Oh, I cannot even imagine a, a Phil Collins song being sung by Disturbed. So that's wild. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 I, don't, I don't know you if Phil Collins sung that. <laughs> now, my like mind is blown either. right now. <laughs> but Loki, I, I like how they did that, and I was like, I wonder if they did more covers. How would they sound? Just because, like, it's like a, it, it's we listen to the original. It still has that rock feel, but this one is just hard um, rock. I'm definitely gonna listen to it after this. It, it, I don't know. To me, it, just, it feels like like I'm I'm missing something because it doesn't have that extra drums and all of that. I feel stuff. it. But one of the things I feel like was missing from this album was. Because every rock album I feel like should have these are like ballads, and there's only like one on here. Overburdens is the only one that's like a different change, change of pace. Because after a while, like I said, it starts to flow and it's just aggressive and it's just shit like that. And then mm -hmm. Overburdens comes on, and it's slowed down. And I'm like, 
Okay. And then I was ready for like a second one to happen and it never happened. It was just like, we're rocking out the rest of the way. One of these is on a um, WWE game and I don't know which one it is. I can't remember. I just know. Yeah, I, think the, all, I think it's overburdened. Even like the vocals in all of the songs sounded pretty much the same. You know what I mean? Like it didn't really feel like much of a fluctuation for me. Yeah. It just sounded like they, it sounded like they literally used the exact same no. instrumentals <laughs> <laughs> and was like, you know what? This has been working. Don't fix it because it's not broken. But little did they know. She <laughs> said it was broken. <laughs> there was a lot of fixing needed. <laughs> uh, I, I, I feel that. A lot of them, like, I was like, this is like, I remember, this beat sounds like the last song. Mm-hmm. Or beat, what, what are you going to call it, instrumental? But one thing I know, because I looked into Disturbed, and I remember <laughs> David Draymond, the lead singer of the group, was saying how, I think 99, a very, very large number. He said, damn near every song I wrote when I was hot. He was like, he's like, I was, I was under the... He's like, wasn't there nothing else but marijuana? But he's like, I'm I'm under the influence when I'm writing this music. So I was like, okay, that's how I guess his creative juice is going. So maybe that's why it's like I remember like like every time I get high, I want to hear these drums. And it's like maybe that's why they all sound so that makes sense. Like, maybe he's like, this is my comfort zone. Right, he's like, this shit goes. <laughs> I wonder why, my brother. I wonder why. He's like, this will go cool, but let me change the hook a little bit. <laughs> but, let me yeah. give out a little bit of extra scream on this end. <laughs> yeah. <my brother. laughs> But it's, um, like I said, this is, this is a couple that I feel like stood out. Um, for me, DFI is obviously my favorite one. Because, like, I like the whole message. I like how the chorus is kind of different. It, it, it's just a better feel to me than most of the songs are. 10,000 Fists was a good, I feel like was a good start to it. I agree. I actually agree. Because, you know what? I didn't think that it was going to be as bad as I it, it ended up being for me when I heard it. Because I actually like 10,000 Fists, too. Mm-hmm. I like the first couple ones. That shit came and, and in, like, and I was like, "Okay, this ain't gonna be bad. This is this be smooth." I, I'll be, the, I'll be the the um, contrarian here. I uh, I knew what it was as soon as I heard Ten Thousand Fists. I was nervous. Um, honestly, this sounded like a Fozzy album. Like it sounded like a Fozzy song. I literally thought Chris Jericho was singing to me, and I was nervous. Chris and it it lived up to everything <laughs> I thought Jericho. it was gonna be. <laughs> But for uh, for Tales of the Fist, I like the like I said, I, I like it. How I like the melody behind it. I like how it's like very hype and very energetic. Even just stop, I feel like it was good because I was like looking at the the song list. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna like all these songs like I thought I would. And then the, the first couple ones started off strong in me, like just stop, guarded to DFI, even the stripping, even the I'm alive. But then like like it just kind of, kind of started to go together. And some of them I didn't really like. like I think Sons of Plunder might be my least, or Sons of Plunder might be my least favorite. Uh, maybe you might be right. Because I was like, I remember hearing that, and it kind of, that's what kind of broke off the, the streak for me. Because it was doing good, and then after that, it was like, it was kind of just going. The Land of Confusion came on, and then I was like, it's, it's over. Like, it was just like, after that, it was it just kind of going to me. And I feel like there could have been some sort of difference, but like I said, I feel like it lacked that ballad feel. It lacked a different tempo. It was just yeah. straightforward for after a point. I'm actually pretty sure Land of Confusion is where I stopped. Oh, yeah, she didn't finish the album. Yeah, I, I like, I... Really wanted to, but it started to irritate me because I was listening to the same song. And I'm like, I, I can't listen to... I was only a minute and 20 seconds in, and there were still three and a half minutes left of the song. And I was like, and this is not even the last song. I can't do this. Right, you had 15, 20 minutes left. Yeah, album. exactly. I was like, I can't. Like, I, I want to be, you know, I, I want to have all of the songs in my hand to bring to y'all but like just couldn't do it sorry <laughs> couldn't, couldn't hold them all together couldn't just kept falling through <laughs> just, just, <laughs> slipping through the cracks exactly <laughs> but um if you're unfamiliar with Disturbed you may know some of their songs I'm Down With The Sickness is probably the biggest hit they have um Stupefy I believe is them maybe I'm going crazy that might be slipping out but it's I, I, I know they, they have some big songs that um my, my personal favorite Disturbed song was Stupefy is Disturbed that is Disturbed okay I, I thought I was stripping for a minute um, they also have Inside the Fire, which is my personal favorite, and I think that's on, it, it, it don't matter, because it's not on this album, and I thought, and I thought it was gonna be, so I was looking forward to that song, and that's how I felt before, I was like, this song's gonna be on this album, that's the main reason I wanted to hear it, because like, this is my favorite Disturbed song, and it's one of the most, like, depressing songs I've ever heard in my life, as far as message goes, but the song itself is a different type of theme, and I was like, this is really good, but when you look deeper into the lyrics, you're like, this is crazy, but, yeah, it's, it's crazy sad, and indestructible is the album, but, 
Then I went back and listened to this one, and I was looking for that song, like I said. So I was like, originally I thought that was going to be my favorite song on there. Then I looked at the song list, I was like, okay, 10,000 Fists or Atlanta Confusion might be. Then since I was like, those, those are the songs I'm most familiar with. But then after getting to the whole list and DFI was the one that I was like able to like replay it, I was like, I'm feeling this. Like my head was mm -hmm. bopping like I was a rock star too. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I was like, after that, I, I, like, I, I, I looked into it pretty intently. I looked into like the live performances and I was like, they sound the same live, which is pretty good. And I was just looking at how like they interact with the crowd, how the crowd interacts. And I tried to just listen to the album straight through. I tried to put it on shuffle to see how I get a different feel from it. But it was kind of remained the same for me. Feel wise, the DFI was still my favorite. The rest of them were kind of just songs going. And yeah, I don't really have too much to say about it. Like I said, I already kind of gave my whole view, whole point of view on there. A two cents, a couple pennies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's pretty much. What it's can cool. You say? It's... That banger to Aiko. <laughs> yeah, it was just it was just a lot of the same thing. So if you really like that sound, you'll really like this album. But yeah, I'm not. You know, I I'll, I'll change my rating from a three to at least a five because I did enjoy the couple of songs, and I don't I don't think it's fair for me to give them a three. I think you I think it was fair because you couldn't finish the album. Okay, you know what? She finished the songs though. But I, she didn't. She, <laughs> made, she finished it to that point. She let she left yeah, four yeah. albums on, or four songs on the table. Yeah. So yeah. I feel trouble. like. Because I thought you were going to say a five to begin with, and then when you said three, I was like, okay, good, that's a good rating. But for me, overall, that five is is pretty fair, I feel like. But I gave it a seven because there's a couple songs that I stood out and I was like, I would listen to this often. Yeah, because DFI, I actually really did like that song. Yeah, like, that, that's how I felt too, because I was like, I was like, for the rest of the day, I was just singing that in my head, it was stuck in my head. Yeah, so like, I, I think it at least bumped, like, with DFI, I feel like it at least bumped it up to a four. Yeah. Like, I can give them a four at least. That confident for. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, for me, like, I, it's kind of hard to get favorite beat because they're all uh, hard as shit. But, so, <laughs> <laughs> I, so I think it would be Land of Confusion for me is the biggest switch, especially just where it was lo located on the album. The greatest hook to me is DFI. I just like the, the way it sounds, the message behind it. And for me, the best verse. No, that's a, that's a hard one for me because, like I said, they're pretty intense. Yeah. So it's like you, after a while, you kind of get lost in what he's saying. You just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's just a lot after a point. You're like, okay. Yeah, you were you all aren't lying. I had to just headbang my way through it. Like, <laughs> yeah, you had to thug through it sometimes. That's why I was like, even like I said, the ones I remember, I could sing along to. The ones that were new, I was just like, either hey, love, and I was just sitting there like, oh, whenever it's over, it's over. <laughs> Like, well, well, it's I, over. <laughs> I wasn't a fan of every song, so. But for me personally, I would listen to the third again just because I know their other content. I would listen to them again. I'd listen to specific songs. I don't think I'll listen to a whole album. Which is fair. It's because that's kind of how I discovered them. I Down with Sickness was obviously the first song I think then everybody heard from them. It's just one of the songs that blew them up, and I would just listen to some of their hits and just gauge whether I like them off of those hits or not. And I like most of their hits, but. There's a couple I didn't, and and I just know the ones I do like, and I know they're they're scattered amongst their albums. So I'm like, okay, it's it's not like they're like one album is better than the other. Like they're probably all just about even, or maybe there's a better one I just haven't heard it yet. But I know I would listen to them again just based off of that. Fair. Yeah, you jiggy with that. <laughs> I mean, I don't really got much else to say besides that. So yeah, that's been another episode of Jukebox. Check us out. We got more coming. Probably some more rock. We get. We, Try to venture to every subject, but we'll see y'all again on the next episode.